Today we take you on a journey through the most extraordinary countries in the world. Our stops are so extraordinary that even your current or former geography teachers probably don't know all the countries in this video. You can expect to see a nation that puts the happiness of its inhabitants above all else. A country where all men are the subordinates of women, and a state founded by a 14-year-old in his nursery. So make sure to stay tuned here at Wonderlane. We start our world tour through the most extraordinary countries of the world in the country that nobody knows. Or have you ever heard of Transnistria? Probably not and yet more than 475,000 people live here on an area of about 3,500 square kilometers. Transnistria was founded 30 years ago on the territory of the Republic of Moldova in southeastern Europe. At that time, the Soviet Union broke up into many small states, and so the independent Republic of Transnistria was formed. The unknown country has its own government, its own currency and even its own military troops. An airport, on which one could land as a tourist directly, one looks however in vain in the whole country, which might also explain why Transnistria knows almost nobody. If you want to visit Transnistria, you first have to fly to the Republic of Moldova and then drive about 60 kilometers to get to the country. Inhabited mostly by Moldovans, Russians and Ukrainians, Transnistria does not offer many attractions for foreign tourists. In fact, the country produces almost exclusively products for export, such as steel plates, cement and cables, and is considered a stronghold of organized crime, corruption and money laundering. It is not surprising that the first tourist information office in the country was opened only in 2017 and that Transistria does not appear on many world maps. From this rather dull country, we now move to what is officially the happiest country in the world, namely the Kingdom of Bhutan in South Asia. While for other states, as is well known, the gross national product, which measures the value of all goods and services produced in the country, is the most important indicator of all, in Bhutan another measurement is the most important namely, gross national happiness. As early as the 18th century, the kingdom's government of the day defined the happiness of the people as the most important goal. And even the country's official constitution has stated for hundreds of years if the government cannot create happiness for its people, then there is no reason for the government to exist. In order for the people to be as happy as possible, the country promotes four main areas, namely, a socially equal economy, cultural values, environmental protection and sustainability, and good governance structures. The country has committed itself to remaining permanently CO2 neutral and attaches great importance to sustainability in all areas. According to surveys, around 43% of residents rate themselves as happy, with this figure even exceeding 70% for some occupational groups, well above the global average. Besides the many happy residents, Tourists might notice something else unusual in Bhutan, and that is that throughout the country, whether on roofs, on doors, on walls or on signs you will find pictures of male genitals. This tradition goes back to a legend, according to which a saint in the 15th century is said to have defeated a demon with the power of his genitals. Since then, drawings of these genitals are considered, how could it be otherwise, lucky charms in Bhutan. From the happiest country, we now travel to the smallest country in the world, namely Talosa. The country was founded in 1979 by the then 14-year-old U.S. American Robert Ben Madison as one of the world's first micronations in his nursery. And the entire national territory at that time actually extended only to his room. So it comes as little surprise that the name Talosa is finished for inside the house. While many children certainly found their own fantasy countries for fun, Robert was very serious about it. And so he designed not only a country flag, but also a real government structure, a newspaper, and even a complete language of his own, consisting of over 28,000 words, for Talasa. With the advent of the internet in the 90s, Talasa became more and more popular and Robert began to include other people as official citizens of the country. Nowadays, almost 500 people have Talasian citizenship and the country is ruled by a king and a prime minister. The sons of the state's founder are Talasian princes and even though the micronation is not officially recognized by any other country in the world, the state's politicians regularly give speeches to their people and claim to have provinces in different parts of the world, such as Turkey or Italy. Let's continue with a country in which probably very few people want to live. It's about Somalia, a country in the far east of Africa, which you have probably heard about through reports about piracy. In fact, there are not only many pirates who constantly attack ships, but Somalia is literally a lawless country. In 1991, over 30 years ago, the government was overthrown and since then there has been a civil war and no government that can enforce laws of any kind. Instead, only the law of the strongest applies here and the various parts of the country have been divided among warlords, clans, pirates and Islamist groups. The country's more than 15 million inhabitants thus have no structures on which they can rely or that would protect them. This, of course, has a negative impact in every respect. For example, Somalia's environment is almost completely destroyed because no one controls how much trees are cut down or fish are caught, or whether toxic and nuclear waste is simply dumped in the wild. Most of the inhabitants have to pay protection money to criminal groups to survive at all and not even 40% of the population can read or write. 
Of course, there are hardly any proper schools here and only a quarter of the country's children can even attend one. On average, Somalis live to be just 57 years old, as almost no one has access to clean drinking water, decent food or medical care. It is therefore hardly surprising that Somalia is one of the countries from which most people try to flee abroad. From the lawless Somalia we now come to a noteworthy mention, which is not a real country, but so curious that it should not be missing in this video. It's about the so-called Other World Kingdom. In Other World Kingdom, as the micronation is called in the Czech Republic, the official motto is women over men so here women can live out their dominant fantasies and men can let themselves be subjugated. Although Other World Kingdom is not officially recognized by any other country, the three hectare state has its own currency, passports, courts, police force, as well as a national flag and national anthem. Only women who are of age and own at least one male slave can become citizens of the country. A complete micronation thus serves the sole purpose of living out certain power relationships between women and men. The last country on our journey through the world's most unusual countries is a real state again, and it is the loneliest country on Earth. The only 26 square kilometers large island state to volume in the Pacific Ocean is visited by so few foreigners as no other country in the world. In fact, only about 260 tourists come here every year, although almost everyone has come into contact with Tuvalu subconsciously. The ending, TV and internet addresses of television stations belongs to Tuvalu and is actually one of the largest sources of income of the small country. Otherwise, the population of the remote state lives mainly from fishing and the export of coconuts. If you want to spend your vacation in the loneliest country in the world, you can expect a beautiful island landscape with white beaches and palm trees unique diving spots and tropical temperatures of about 30 degrees Celsius. The fact that there are still hardly any tourists is probably mainly due to the poor accessibility of the island state. By the way, only Sealand is even lonelier than Tuvalu. Sealand is an unofficial micronation on an oil rig about 10 kilometers off the coast of England. It was occupied in 1967 and proclaimed a nation by the occupiers. In the course of time, Sealand served as accommodation for up to about 10 people at a time, who lived there according to their own laws and also had their own currency flag and anthem. Nowadays, only a single guard lives all alone in the loneliest country in the world. That's it for the most unusual countries in the world. Write us in the comments which of these countries you would like to visit. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to Wonderland for more interesting content, and see you next time, here at Wonderland.